Hello, my name is Tim Orndorff, the Tucker Specialist with CE, and this is... I'm Jordan Wingard with Blue Diamond Pumps, and today we're going to show you how to apply one of our Blue Diamond Pumps to the Carrier Mini Split. Um, today we have the Micro Blue. Uh, the Micro Blue is a very versatile pump. Um, it creates suction, it's positive displacement, so you can actually mount it in a variety of options. Uh, we have an undermount application that we can provide uh, the plastic cover for. The pump can be mounted underneath. But the pumps also create suction, so they can be mounted above the unit in any orientation. And you'll also notice the Micro Blue is small enough to mount in the back of the unit. Today we're going to show you how to mount the Micro Blue underneath the unit using our fascia kit. We're going to get started by removing the cover of the unit. All right, so we've got the cover off the unit. What we did actually before we took the cover off is we measured where this cover is going to be. So what we had to do is we did a placement, we marked a line, so we know that the cover is going to be flush to the bottom of your unit. Um, what we also did is we've got the drain tube from the unit pulled all the way across as far as it'll go. And then what we've done is we've taken the half-inch ID adapter that's provided with the fascia kit and gone ahead and adapted it to the drain tube. What we're going to do next is we're going to fit the backing plate flush with the mini split. And then what we'll do is we'll install the reservoir and then we'll cut the tubing to adapt to the reservoir. And then from there, we'll move forward to installing the pump. All right, now that we've got our backing plate mounted, reservoir installed, we've got the tubing trimmed to our liking, we've got everything fitted. Next step is going to be mounting the actual pump, the micro glue. What we'll do is we'll mount the micro glue here. As you can tell, it'll just clip right in. Um, then what we'll do is we'll fish these wires. Once we're done fishing the wires, we'll show you how to properly install them in your air hammer. All right, so what we've done so far, now we have the vent tube ran. So what we did is we connected one side to the reservoir. The other side of the vent tube is just higher than the drain pan. Um, we've also gone ahead and snapped the pump into place. What we did here is we've extended our alarm cable. Um, what we've done, just wired under the wires. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fish these wires up back through to the um, terminal block inside the air handler. Then we'll move forward with the wiring process. Okay, what we've done, we've killed the power to the unit. We've got our wires fished over here. Um, now we're going to uh, power the pump. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to run L1 from your condenser through my pump. So your L1 on this carrier unit is a black wire. We're actually going to wire nut that together with both of the black wires from the blue diamond pump. One of them is common. One is what we call L1, which is the hot leg. Um, so we're going to take all three of these black wires and wire nut them together. And that's how we're going to get the voltage to the pump. The next step would be taking your normally closed contact and installing that on L1 of the air handler. So that's how we're going to get the voltage back to the air handler. What this does is if your unit goes into an alarm mode, what we're doing is we're going to break power coming in through L1. So that'll turn the air handler off, but keep the pump running in effort to prevent overflow. The second wire here is the white wire. That's going to be the second leg of power to the pump. That'll install on L2 with L2 from your condenser. So your end result will be two wires there. Lastly, we will take the green, and that will be our ground. All right, now that the wiring is complete, we just want to make sure that everyone understands that we are not running L2 or S through the pump. The only thing we will break with the blue diamond pumps is your L1. L1 will run through the pump, use our normally closed contact to bring the voltage back to your air handler. The wiring has been complete. Uh, what we'll do next, um, we will, what we'd like to do for your installs is you want to put power to the pump before you actually plug in the reservoir for calibration mode. So what we'll do is now that we have everything powered, um, where we have everything installed, uh, we'll run our tubing, then we'll put power to the pump, and then we'll plug in the reservoir for calibration. All right, now that we have our tubing installed, uh, we put power to the unit, we plug the reservoir in for calibration, now the pump is ready for operation. To button up the install, last thing we're going to do is we are going to apply the cover. 
And now you have a micro blue and a fascia kit installed with your carrier mini split. Now we'll put the cover back on and we'll be ready for operation. Okay, after the installation of the of the pump, we are reinstalling the cover, but remember there's a pipe coming down, so the carrier ductless mini split are not knots for that, so we will have to field fabricate a notch with the unit bit so the cover fits back tightly. All right, now we're all buttoned up. Um, pump's installed, the tubing is ran. Uh, what we need to do now is test the unit. So while you're packing everything up, cleaning up your job site, if you want to just make sure you dump a little bit of cold water in the drain pan, that'll drain into the reservoir. The pump should turn on and eject the water. Also, one note is with the uh, mini split pumps, so you will, or with the Blue Diamond pump in particular, you will need quarter inch ID tubing uh, for, the, for the intake of, and the discharge side of the pump.